Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Before I really start this video, I'd like to just go off script a bit and just talk about um, just a recent issue that I've had with the channel. Uh, nothing major really, but um, my last video on Antarctica uh, was ad restricted because apparently its content was too controversial for most advertisers, according to this great platform. Um, and therefore, um, it didn't obviously doesn't generate any uh, income for me at all. Now, I don't usually like talking about this very much because it feels like, in a way, it just feels like begging. But um, seeing as any of my videos can potentially be randomly demonetized because, you know, I might say something that kind of offends potential advertisers, um, I was just thinking perhaps if any of you would uh, like to support me on Patreon, um, just help me kind of grow, um, grow the site there. Um, you can list potential ideas, no matter what they are, uh, related to evolution or cryptozoology or anything that you'd like me to cover. And yeah, I'll, I can very easily get around to doing that for you. Again, it doesn't have to be much or anything. Just, uh, it would just, it would really help me out. Just every little kind of helps. I don't, I don't make these videos for the purpose of uh, making money. Uh, I just. I genuinely want to get this kind of information out there really that not many other people on this platform really talk about like like obscure extinct animal groups and like going into deep dives on the history of cryptids and things so if you could just uh if you could help me out in that respect then i'd be really grateful if we could just try and build up uh, my patreon i'll link it in the description for you so yeah just feel free to go over there and Perhaps have a look and see what you think. All right, okay. It's, um, right, back to the back to the video now. Powered flight is a rare evolutionary development among vertebrates, with this trait having emerged independently just three times in the pterosaurs, birds, and bats, respectively. Of these groups, only the evolution of the early avialans and their transition to flight is relatively well understood. With this being mostly down to the spectacularly preserved early Cretaceous Lagerstarter deposits of Liaoning Province, China. Unfortunately, we are not so lucky when it comes to the bats and pterosaurs, with early transitional forms charting the steps taken towards powered flight being, for the moment at least, completely absent in the fossil record. As shown in a previous episode, the Chiropterans appear suddenly during the early Eocene, roughly 56 million years ago, as fully flight-capable animals. The volant pterosaurs, similarly, make their first sudden appearance in the Norian stage of the Late Triassic, about 228 million years ago. In both cases, phylogenetic studies indicate that both groups diverged quite a long time before their oldest known appearance in the fossil record. This should not come as a surprise, as the common ancestors of both bats and pterosaurs were small, lightweight animals with delicate skeletons, meaning that they had low chances of being preserved as fossils outside of exceptional circumstances, such as meeting their demise in what would later become lake deposits. Therefore, since the first scientific description of pterosaurs roughly 200 years ago, it has been very unclear how these flying reptiles evolved. In the second half of the 20th century, it became well established that pterosaurs were true archosaurs, being close relatives of dinosaurs within the clade Ornithodera. Aside from this, it was not known which Triassic Ornithoderans were closest to the pterosaurs. Thankfully, in the 2020s, new discoveries relating to this question have been made, revealing that the small slender Lagerpetids are basal relatives of pterosaurs within the newly defined clade Pterosauromorpha although none of these appear to have been flying or gliding animals. This finding does bring us a step closer to understanding the origin of the pterosaurs from terrestrial ancestors, and also demonstrates that the flying reptiles and dinosaurs both evolved from small, active, fornivorous, and mostly bipedal forebears. Before turning to the Lagerpetids themselves, we should cover another historically controversial animal, now considered a close relative of pterosaurs, Scleromoclus. This mysterious little archosaur dwelt in what is now Scotland during the Carnian stage of the Late Triassic, between 235 and 205 million years ago, which at this time was a hot desert region, about as different from modern Scotland as it's possible to be. Measuring less than 20 centimetres, or 7.8 inches long, this was a lightly built, 
probably fluctuatively bipedal insectivore, with long hind legs, comparatively shorter forelimbs, and a relatively large skull equipped with small, closely packed teeth. First described in 1907, this genus is known from seven poorly preserved specimens, which have made classifying Scaramoclus a total nightmare, with it being placed as a basal ornithodiron, an even more basal member of Avimetatarsalia, the sister taxon to pterosaurs, and even among the superficially crocodile-like Dosweliid archosauriforms. Its odd appearance also didn't help matters, with paleontologists reconstructing the animal as being either a bipedal runner, a jaboa-like leaper, or, more bizarrely, as a hopping, frog-like quadruped. However, the most detailed recent study focused on Scleromoclus has found it to have been a close relative of pterosaurs and lagerpetids, perhaps being a member of the latter group. In a 2022 paper by Fofa et al., which utilised microcomputed tomographic scans of all known specimens, it was shown that this genus was probably a cursorial fluctuative biped, being highly agile in life. No definitive adaptations for a hopping mode of locomotion were found, with the animal's pelvis being small and not reinforced for shock absorption while leaping, as is seen in jaboas, kangaroos, or small birds that move in this way. Features shared with early pterosaurs included a large skull in relation to the overall body size, a very short basio-occipital neck, and a process on the jaw that tapers to a point. Therefore, Scaramoclus gives us a valuable look at what the very early relatives of pterosaurs potentially looked like. A more well-known and expansive group of pterosaur relatives were the Lagerpetids, which were traditionally thought to have been closer to dinosaurs. These generally small, slender, and mostly bipedal leggy animals are pretty rare in the fossil record, and are mostly known from their distinctive hind limb elements. Recent scans of the skulls of these reptiles have demonstrated a number of anatomical traits shared with pterosaurs, including a large flocculus, which is a part of the brain that is involved in motor control, and a complex inner ear structure. Interestingly, several species are now known to have possessed both small, densely packed teeth and a toothless beak at the tip of the snout. In the most recent study on these archosaurs by Garcia and Muller, it was found that Lagerpetids may not have been a natural grouping, being more of a grade leading up to the true pterosaurs. The study found that the most basal member of this possible group was the Malagasy genus Congonophon, whose fun-sounding name actually means bug slayer. It was a tiny little insectivore, that's estimated to have stood just 10 centimetres or 3.9 inches tall, being about the same size as a blackbird, albeit with a long tail. The holotype was found not to be a juvenile, but instead a sub-adult that was almost fully grown. Along with the similarly diminutive Scleromoclus and the basal dinosauromorphs, this suggests that both dinosaurs and pterosaurs evolved from common, miniaturised ancestors, which may explain the origins of the elevated metabolisms and insulating coats present in both lineages. Although there is currently no physical evidence of this, I strongly suspect that animals as tiny and active as Congonophon were fuzzy in life. A larger member of this lineage was the type genus Lagerpetum, from the Carnion of Argentina. Measuring about 70 centimetres or 28 inches long and weighing less than 4 kilograms, this leggy animal was about the size of a domestic cat. Like most Lagerpetids, it was probably a highly active insectivore, with some paleontologists arguing that it was a bipedal hopper, although this is not universally accepted. Interestingly, when forelimb elements from these animals are known, they are relatively elongated and fall in the middle ground between full bipeds and quadrupeds, meaning that at least some lagerpetids were a bit like hadrosaurs from the Cretaceous, walking on all fours when moving slowly, but running on their hind legs. This has been suggested for the genus Ixalerpeton from the Carnion of Brazil, which lived alongside the small sauropodomorph Buriolestes showing that the diversification of true dinosaurs did not eliminate other late Triassic ornithodirans. This was particularly true of the relatively late genus Dromomeron, which was native to the famous Norian-aged Ghost Ranch site in New Mexico, as well as Argentina. This one metre, or roughly three foot long insectivore, lived in the same ecosystem as a variety of dinosaurs, including Coelophysis and Daemonosaurus in North America, and several sauropodomorphs in Argentina. As a small, fast predator, 
Dromomeron may have lived somewhat like a desert fox, feeding mostly on invertebrates and avoiding the bigger carnivores in its environment. According to the aforementioned 2025 study, the most derived of the Lagerpetid grade, and therefore the closest to pterosaurs, was the fascinating genus Venetoraptor. This animal was found in the Carnian Age Santa Maria formation of southern Brazil, and was similar to other Lagerpetids in size, being about one metre long. Importantly, the forelimbs were well preserved, showing that they were relatively long, with proportionally large hands, equipped with elongated fingers tipped with hooked claws. This suggests that Venetoraptor was a good climber, and probably an obligate biped. Like in the volant pterosaurs, the fourth digit of the hands was longest, although nowhere near as exaggerated. The tips of the jaws possessed a hooked beak, which indicates that this animal was a carnivore, possibly hunting small reptiles and insects, both in the trees and on the ground. These traits, as well as Venetoraptor's placement as the sister taxon of pterosaurs in the 2025 study, perhaps gives us some insight into what the common ancestor of the flying reptiles might have looked like. It may be that small carnivorous animals with good climbing abilities such as this developed adaptations for gliding, with the elongated fourth finger supporting a patagium connected to the body and hind legs. However this transition occurred, the first of the true pterosaurs appear suddenly during the Norian stage of the late Triassic, about 228 million years ago, with phylogenetic studies indicating that this group diverged from their lagerpetid cousins significantly earlier than this, probably during the Middle Triassic, roughly 240 million years ago. The majority of the oldest pterosaurs have been found in Europe, perhaps suggesting that the group may have evolved here, although this may also be a result of bias in sampling. Who knows, perhaps one day the pterosaur equivalent of Archaeopteryx will be found, although the chances of this are very slim. Given the rapid diversification of these animals, the early pterosaurs deserve a whole episode devoted to them, so I'll leave it there for this video. Thanks for watching everyone. If you'd like to help me dodge random demonetization, please once again feel free to support me on Patreon if you can. The next episode will be covering the unique Australian and Pacific Mikosukine crocodilians. So until then, I'll see you again soon. Cheerio.